What is up guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today's goal is of course, to get the Evo 10 up and running. I got so fed up and so sick of working on this car yesterday and not knowing what is going on that I just said screw it. Went and helped my girlfriend get some things for the new apartment and then kind of just hung out the rest of the day. But it's bugging me so much and it's pissed me off so much that I cannot figure out what is going on with this car. So basically what it's doing, if you didn't watch the last video, it's acting, when you go to try to start the car, it's acting like you're not pushing in the clutch. There's a few things, there's a bunch of things I've already checked on the car and that is, let's see, let me pull up my little list here. I've checked over all the fuses, every single fuse on this car, all the relays, literally every single relay. I've checked the clutch switch. There's a little switch under the under the clutch pedal, and if that doesn't get pushed in when you push down the clutch pedal, then it's not going to allow the car to start, of course. It's not even turning over. It's not cranking over at all. I've narrowed it down to the starter wire that clips onto the starter, not the one that bolts on. The one that clips onto the starter, the one that's supposed to get power when you turn the ignition, that's not getting any power whatsoever. I've refloshed the ECU, so I don't think the ECU is bricked uh, because of anything. There are a few things I want to check today before I like really, really dig into this thing. And a few, a few just really simple things. Oh, and one more thing I've checked. This is the, the SSS model, so it has the fast key. I've taken that key out of the transmitter, put it in the ignition, and put the fast key back onto the back of it. How you're supposed to do it and then try to start it that way. That didn't do anything. There's two things I want to, or three things I want to try. First thing is I'm going to swap out the batteries on the fast key, see if that's it. I don't think it is because it still locks and unlocks a little just fine. So I'm going to try that. I'm gonna unplug the ECU, kind of hopefully maybe it resets the ECU. I noticed Tefra talking about that on the forum, so I'm gonna try that and see if it'll start. If not, then this is gonna sound crazy, but I'm going to put the wheels in the car, put it back all the way back down on the ground and see if maybe there's some weird sensor that because the car is so high up in the air on the front and not the back, that maybe that is not allowing the car to start. I don't know. Maybe it's like some sort of crash sensor or angle sensor somewhere. So I'm gonna try those three things. Hopefully one of those is the issue. If it's not, then we're gonna have to dig deeper into this thing. Before I do anything, I'm just gonna go try to start it one more time. Let's see what happens. Watch it start. Nothing. All right, where's this key fob at? Yeah, this thing still unlocks and locks the little worse, so I think the batteries are fine, but it's only $2 to try and swap this thing out, so let's give it a shot. All right, let's give her a hell, see what happens. <sighs> Nothing. Okay, that didn't fix it. Next thing I'm gonna try and do is unplug the ECU. So this guy right here, I'm just gonna take all those wiring connectors off and unplug it, see what happens. So as that ECU is disconnected, I'm just gonna let it sit for probably like 30 minutes or 15 minutes. Um, I'm gonna throw the wheels back on the car and then just get it back on the ground. Like I was saying, Maybe there's some sort of like crash sensor that doesn't allow the car to start. It's not even that high in the front, but I'm going at every single option right now because I don't know what to do. Okay, car's on the ground, ECU is plugged back in. Damn, she looks good, but damn, I wish it would run. So let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. Please, 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 please start. Ah, nothing. Why, why, why? <sighs> there is one more thing I want to try real quick and it's seeing if this car is stuck in valet mode. I did some reading online. I guess all you have to do is turn on, turn on the ignition, hold the gas pedal to the floor for five seconds and it should flash something on the dash. Huh, nothing flashed. Weird. I'll try it anyway. So every single thing that I tried today, nothing at all fixed the issue. I've tried to reset the ECU multiple times by disconnecting both of the main or wires on there. I reflashed the ECU multiple times. If the ECU is bricked, usually you can't reflash it and every time you turn on the ignition, the fans stay on. So the ECU is not bricked on the car. The only thing I can think of right now is somehow the car is like immobilized, meaning the key Somehow is it matching up with the ECU? And I don't know what would have caused that. I don't know what else to do. Um, I guess I'll pick this video back up if I figure out what to do. If not, I'll probably just upload it and see if you guys have any suggestions. Three hours later. <sighs> I finally, finally figured out what the issue was. This is the dumbest thing ever. And it always is the most simple stuff, I feel like. I had my brother Austin come over here and we started with just like the most basic stuff, tracking all the wiring from the ignition all the way down. And all it was, guys, 
I hate to say this, but there's two wiring connectors that are both the same. One goes to your starter, one goes to your AC pump. And I had those two flipped. That's all it was. They're the same exact connector. So I feel like an absolute retard, but we got it figured out. The car turns over. So right now I have the fuel pump out and I have my crank sensor disconnected. I'm gonna crank the car over for a while and just try to get some oil moving around in the motor and also get oil into my turbo. And then I'll plug everything back in and hopefully start this car for the very first time. Ooh, look at Devin. He's so happy. I'm so freaking happy. I was so pissed off yeah, earlier, guys. because what you kept on saying is if this doesn't turn over, then I'm going to put it in the backfield and let it rot. Yeah, seriously. I actually, I was 100% convinced it was my ECU. That's why we weren't filming anything earlier when I when we Austin figured out what that problem was. Do you have everything, like, plugged in up here properly? Uh, probably not, but we'll see. There's two things disconnected right now, so it's not, it's not going to start right now. Oh, can I turn it off? No, this is important. Oh. I'm going to do this for a while. Probably like three times. I'm so excited. This is the most beautiful sound in the world is my car turning over. Especially Ava. Ah, oh, she sounds so healthy too. One more time. Sounds like she's got some good compression too. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put my fuel pump relay in and then I have to plug in my crank position sensor as well. Will it start? Quite the beard. Is it gonna start? Well, yeah. What do you mean, well, yeah. Well, are you gonna plug this thing in? In my fuse box cover? Oh. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. I think everything else is plugged in. There's so much Come stuff. Come on, baby. Get it over There's so much stuff with. I took off, though, when I when I couldn't get it turned over, so I don't know if everything else is on. Okay, the moment of truth. Strong. Don't pop out your knee. That didn't sound healthy. My check engine light came on. I'm gonna scan that real quick. Yeah, it sounded weird. Let me see that check engine light and then I'll start it again. That sounded kind of silly though. It's a brand new motor though, so. Oh wait, I forgot to put oil in it. You did? No, I'm just kidding. If I forgot to put oil in it, my motor would be ruined. One code found for intake air temp sensor. That's just, that's for my math, which when we were trying to start it earlier, or just turning it over earlier, we didn't have that plugged in. So I'm gonna clear that and then I'm gonna go ahead and start it up again. That's not a big deal. You have to give it a time. You have to give it time to break in the new motor. How do you even know what that means? Because I built one. Oh, wait, hold up. And that. Hell yeah, boys. We finally, finally, finally got it running. All it was is I had to hold the gas pedal all the way down to the floor and pull the fuel pump relay out. And after about five, five tries, it started up. I saw that online that you're supposed to do that if, you, if the engine may be flooded out. I guess it cuts all fuel going to the motor. The car's up and running. I checked a bunch of stuff. I checked the timing. Timing was good. Um, I just went over everything that I did and everything seemed to be in check so I knew it had to be something really really easy and it was as you can see it's freaking finally running guys hell yes I'm so pumped right now I'm gonna go ahead and throw the rest of this car together get it off the jack stands I gotta throw the wheel back on the inner fender liner and some other stuff in the engine bay my intake back on and all that good stuff so freaking hyped right now it's been a long process since I got this motor in we had the freaking the coolant issue, the alternator wire grounded out issue. That was my fault. All, everything was my fault on this build, and is I think the reason why I had so many like little problems here and there is because this whole build I wasn't like very excited to do because the whole situation could have been avoided. So I think that's why I had so many little mistakes here and there. But the car is finally up and running, so I'm super super stoked, super hyped. Let's get this thing together and go on a drive. We have quite a bit left to do, like break-in wise. We have to drive it like 50 miles, then change the oil. So there's a lot left to do, but the car is running guys. The car is freaking running. All right, so now that I have verified that the car runs, everything is good. I shut the car off right away, checked over all the coolant and engine oil, tranny oil, 
and I even checked the transfer case oil as well and thankfully I did because it was a little bit low the transfer case was leaking oil when I had the motor training out of the car so now that all that is done we are good to go we need to start breaking in the engine the first thing we're gonna do is start up the car let it run for 20 minutes and we're gonna vary the idle or vary the throttle between like two and three thousand rpm for 20 minutes straight then we're gonna shut the car off let it cool down check the coolant check the engine oil probably don't need to check the tranny or uh, transfer case oil at all The first 20 minutes is done. I'm gonna let this thing cool down. Unfortunately, we can't really finish braking in this motor today. And the reason for that is because my fusible link, which is the thing that blew when my alternator wire grounded out, um, it's still blown. I but just bypassed it with this little this little jumper fuse thing right here, which is only 30 amps, and I'm pretty sure that fusible link's supposed to be 140. And this thing keeps blowing, and this powers my radio, which also powers my gauges, my AFR, my boost. So obviously, when I'm driving the car around for the first time, I want my AFR gauge to be working. I need I need 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 to be able to monitor that. My new fusible block comes in in about two or three days, so I am going to. End this video off right here and then in a two or three days you guys will see me post another well it'll probably be tomorrow for you guys but two or three days for me you'll see the next video of us officially driving this car for the very first time i could probably go drive it around a little bit right now but i don't want to chance it i want to be able to monitor my afrs but i'm super super hyped the evo is finally live finally running no weird noises yet yet <laughs> i hope it doesn't have any weird noises there's no smoking there's nothing there's no leaks evo should be good to go we had a lot of weird issues with this build this time around but it's okay we got it up and running i want to thank you guys so much for all of the help all the support and for checking out my videos thank you guys so much i'll see you guys when we got the uh fusible link back in peace out hope you guys have a good day i'll see you later